When you arrive at the scene of a cardiac arrest, time is critical. Compressions should start as soon as possible and any interruption to those compressions or no flow time should be kept to an absolute minimum. It is therefore essential that the airway device is easy, rapid and reliable to insert. Eye gel is a supraglottic airway with a non-inflatable cuff, gastric channel and other features that make it an ideal choice for cardiac arrest in comparison to more traditional devices. One area of particular importance is the speed and ease of insertion. Unlike a laryngeal mask, there is no need to deflate an eye gel cuff prior to placement or inflate after insertion. This is because the non-inflatable gel-like cuff is specially designed to mirror the anatomy over the laryngeal inlet. One recent independent study has shown eye gel to be 50% faster to insert than the other devices tested, including an ET tube, ProSeal and classic LMA. Eye gel could also be inserted during chest compressions. Another common concern during CPR is regurgitation and aspiration. To help combat this, eye gel incorporates a gastric channel which has three primary functions. Firstly, it provides an early warning of regurgitation, as regurgitant fluid will be seen coming up the gastric channel, allowing appropriate action to be taken. Secondly, a suction tube can be passed down the gastric channel to allow emptying of fluid from the stomach. And thirdly, excess air in the stomach is vented through the gastric channel, reducing the risk of regurgitation. Seal pressure is also important in CPR as the patient will often require a high airway pressure to enable adequate ventilation. Eye gel's anatomically shaped cuff accurately positions itself over the laryngeal framework, providing a superior seal to that of a standard laryngeal mask. Stability is important for out-of-hospital CPR, as the patient may be in an awkward position and need to be moved. The eye gel's buccal cavity stabiliser aids this in two ways. It naturally adapts its shape to the oropharyngeal curvature of the patient and resists rotation. The eye gel O2 recess pack includes a modified eye gel with a supplementary oxygen port, a sachet of lubricant, a suction tube and an airway support strap all contained within a sterile pack. We will now run through the use of iGel O2 recess pack in a cardiac arrest scenario. First decide on the most appropriate size of iGel O2 to use. Correct size is normally determined by weight. Open the iGel O2 rhesus pack, remove the inner tray containing the lubricant, airway support strap and suction tube and place the contents to one side within easy reach. Place a small bolus of lubricant on the base of the inner side of the main shell of the packaging. Touching no lower than the bite block of the iGel O2, lubricate the back, sides and front of the cuff with a thin layer of lubricant. Ensure any excess is removed. Grasp the lubricated eye gel O2 firmly along the integral bite block. The ideal patient position for insertion is with the head extended and the neck flexed. But if this is not possible or is inappropriate for the patient, then eye gel O2 can be inserted with the head in a neutral orientation. A proficient user can achieve insertion of eye gel O2 in less than 5 seconds. Introduce the leading soft tip into the mouth of the patient in a direction towards the hard palate. It is not necessary to insert fingers into the patient's mouth. Glide the device downwards and backwards along the hard palate with a continuous but gentle push until a definitive resistance is felt. Do not apply excessive force. The tip of the airway 
should be located into the upper oesophageal opening. The cuff should be located against the laryngeal framework. The epiglottis should be held in place by the epiglottic rest. The gastric channel should open into the oesophagus and the incisors should be resting on the integral bite block. The IGL-02 should now be secured in place with the airway support strap or taped down from maxilla to maxilla. To use the airway support strap, slide it under the patient's neck and secure it to the IGL-02 hook ring using the appropriate holes on the strap. Ensure there is sufficient tension to hold the IGL-02 securely in place, but not excessive tension that may cause trauma to the patient. Some adjustment of the strap may be needed. A resuscitation bag can then be connected to the IGL-02 and ventilation can begin. If your resuscitation protocol incorporates chest compressions in combination with passive oxygenation, rather than positive pressure ventilation, the supplementary oxygen port provides an easy and effective method for delivering oxygen passively to the lungs. To use the supplementary oxygen port, remove the cap from the oxygen port and connect one end of a standard oxygen tube to the port and the other end to a suitable method of oxygen delivery and set to the oxygen flow shown in the instructions for use. When treatment has finished, turn off the oxygen supply, remove the oxygen tubing from the IGEL-02 and replace the port cap. When IGEL-02 is being used conventionally, it is important that the supplementary oxygen port remains closed. If required, a suction tube can be passed down the gastric channel to empty the stomach contents. To use the suction tube, place a small bolus of lubricant over the proximal end of the gastric channel, insert the suction tube a short way down the gastric channel and move it up and down to prime before feeding the tube down. Many independent studies have evidenced the easy and rapid insertion, high seal pressures and improved safety offered by IGEL and it is now included in the European Resuscitation Council guidelines. The IGEL-02 Resus Pack. Stay focused on what matters.